Where's the audio? <laughs> I'm for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. How's it been? <laughs> uh, fine. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks for agreeing to come on to this our, our, our show today and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. good. It's uh, I can't remember the last time I even saw you. I'm not sure if it's, but it's no, been, it's been a, while. a while. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. But yeah, I mean, I, I, it's, it's, I think one of the things that I'm looking to start to do is to have a chance to talk to people from around the world who, you, who have in some ways are uh, impacting lives and it may not get all the major headlines that others are getting, but it's important for others to know if you're living in Cambodia, Australia, Nigeria, United States, to see that other people are like them. So when times are tough, they can say, you know, it's, this is what they're doing and this is the challenge they're facing, but they're still making it through. So welcome this evening. Uh, thank you. Okay. Well, I mean, for those, I mean, I've known um, Obi since secondary school, so many years ago, um, apart from being um, a fast runner, I remember that from Intel Sports, <laughs> but, uh, and a prefect, but he was also, so almost like a guardian agent, so he took, you know, took care of the weaker ones among us. And so I, I did, it's really good to see that he still, in some ways, has that, that sort of uh, background where he's looking after the less uh, able in society. But do you want to introduce yourself and uh, at least let everyone know who you are and what you do? Okay. Uh, my, well, my name is um, Obi Bukwe and I'm... Um, uh, I did train as a medical doctor, but I don't practice anymore, but I, I, I'm still heavily involved in the, in, in the medical sector because uh, there are many aspects of, uh, of, care, of um, healthcare. And one of the ways I do is like looking at ways on how I can improve access to, to healthcare to people, but by technology or otherwise, or mainly through technology. Um, I, uh, I I went to FGC in Janiki. That's where myself and Namdi met. And from there, I went to you know, uh, University of Lagos. Um, and I moved to the UK uh, immediately after. I was here for like 10 years. But I, I, I saw that I, there was more I could do back in Nigeria than I could do here. Because uh, I felt that with the knowledge I had and the skills I had, I could actually help in improving access to healthcare back in Nigeria, uh, which is what I did. Um, so in Nigeria, I've, I've set up two organizations. One of them is the Ashley Medical Clinic, which um, sort of like looks at the clinical, clinical where practice where the patients is, patients is more of the center of the care that we're doing. Because usually in Nigeria, traditionally, the doctor has always been the ultimate decider of of, of the kind of care you get and the access you get. But uh, like we are now seeing in a lot of um, like uh, more developed countries uh, where, they pay, where they talk about patient-centric care, where is the patient that is, is who actually matters most. Because your patient is ultimately your, your, your major and only client. Mm -hmm. And they are the ones that you saw the, the quality of the care that you deliver has to be determined by, how, by the patients themselves rather than the clinicians. And obviously, no patient wants to be no, no patient wants to receive poor quality care. Everyone wants uh, high quality care, and they want it at uh, an affordable um, affordable rate. But in, in a country like Nigeria, how is that shift possible? Because because um, you, you're describing a model that you might see in say the US, where they have health insurance and you're paying into it, so you have a lot more of uh, a say. But how, how does this sort of thing work within Nigeria? And is it limited to those who can afford it that can then dictate what they want? Hmm. So like in, in Nigeria now, we do have health insurance. Uh, I mean, it's still limited. I mean, only like 6 million, we're a nation of 200 million and only like 6 million people uh, actually do have health insurance. But part of it is a result of, of lack of awareness which is mm. one of the things, because it's not like if the health insurance, are, health insurance policies that are out there are unaffordable. They are, a lot of them are within affordable means and um, you can pay monthly. So before, when they first started off, they used to ask for annual rates. 
So which would come up to about uh, 30,000 Naira, but now you can, there are many health insurance companies that offer monthly rates of like 5,000, 4,000. What are they equating into dollars or so? So if, if you put that in dollars, so you're looking at, uh, so if you're saying 4,000, that's about 10, $10 a month. Okay. So is I I I mean there's still quite a lot of poor people in Nigeria, but it still but it still increases the net of people that we can provide care to. Okay, okay, and um, but then, are you providing the actual medical treatment yourselves, or are you then outsourcing it to other medical practices? So we provide we provide the care ourselves. Um, and one of the things that we've done, one of the things that we try to do, uh, at least from the way we practice at Dennis Ashley, is that we try and, so, uh, you know, like when you have in the UK or in the US, if you have a general problem, medical problem, the first person you tend to visit is the, is the GP. Yeah. And the GP is like the gatekeeper of mm -hmm. where you're supposed to go and they direct you to the right resources. Then you now come back when you're done with, with those resources and the GP takes over. So, but in Nigeria, it seems that everyone since, so you may have a specialist who's a, who's a neurologist, and he's also seeing general, um, general, general medicine patient, which is sort of like, you know, <clears throat> it's not a productive use of his, his own resources, not productive use of his resources as well. Mm -hmm. um, so in, and we do have quite a lot of people that are non-specialists in Nigeria, but they're they also tend to go into things that they're not supposed to be doing, like providing surgical, surgical care, where, where that's, which should be left to the surgeons themselves. So it's, a, it's more of like trying to reorientate the, the clinical practice in Nigeria itself. So it's more resource efficient in the way that we handle, the way that we provide care to people. Because the, way, the current model that we have right now, where everybody does almost what they want, is, is, is very inefficient. And, that limits the kind of quality of care that people can get. Because if you're not seeing the right person at the right time, then you know it's, it's going to be a problem down the line. Or is it's already a problem in Nigeria as it is. Mm. But then, are you then is the focus on getting the is the focus on getting the medical the doctors and prep practitioners to change how they work, or are you looking at the actual the population and saying no, you should demand better? So it's a, it's a combination of both. So because <clears throat> so like right now we tend to focus on, on large groups and when we go out, we go and have um, discussions with like companies or social social organizations and explain to them how how healthcare should work for them rather than them you know rather than them running away from healthcare as they, as as they currently do it's more like understanding how the how general practice fits in the model of healthcare delivery and how you, how you can better navigate through the healthcare system so that you can get the best resources for you. Then in terms of also, we also tend to have uh, discussions or round, round table talks with other healthcare professionals and sort of explain to them as well. And a lot of them do actually get it and they do understand that, you know, this is something that is probably needed in Nigeria. And, I think with the with the healthcare bill that might be coming up, I mean, it doesn't go far enough, but it's still some, it's still, it's still a step from what we currently have um, going on in Nigeria in itself. So I know you also have, um, is it Well Me? Well Knew Me, yes. You well Knew Me, yes. So can you tell us about, about that? Because I, I, I was really fascinated recently when I saw, uh, where I saw the uh, Well Knew Me publish um, a mental health um, situation in Nigeria and mm -hmm. why, why it surprised me was that um, it's for my for my remembrance is that it mental health was very much of a, you know that if anyone felt like that mental health it's well we need to go to the doctor to, the, to, uh, to a, a church or so to get an exorcism or go to a nature doctor <laughs> and then you see mental health as being somebody who um, is probably they call them Bushman or madman, you know, running the streets and stuff. So, but you published data that really mirrored a lot of what's happening in, in other Western countries about anxiety, depression, and so forth. So, you talk me through that, and okay. but also what Well you Me does. Well, you know, so, Well you know, Me is a health technology is a health technology company, and uh, more of the co-founders there. And um, one of the things that we do is that we uh, we've developed uh, ag academic based um, assessment. So. 
where we intelligently we sort of like drive through the responses people give to certain questions that we've drawn up about their health, whether it's physical or mental, and sort of like analyze that data itself and sort mm. of like to make more sense of it. So that's you know that because one of the things that we lack in Nigeria is that we do not have adequate data on anything. And when you do not have adequate data, it's, it's harder to plan. It's harder mm-hmm. to understand. You have first have to, before you can before you can really solve a problem, you have to understand the problem and yeah. who who's affected by that problem itself, and you know what what kind of resources that you have in place that could tackle that um, that problem. So um, <clears throat> so the health um, uh, mental health survey that you, you mentioned was something that we did in partnership with and especially which is my other which is the other company that i'm involved in and because we 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 know that uh, as healthcare professionals we are, we are well aware of the the incidence or the incidence of uh, mental health in, uh, problems in nigeria that is people I, like you said when people think about mental health they don't think about it there's a guy roaming on the street and he's taking off his clothes and yeah 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 they, but, but as healthcare professionals, which you are, you know, is you know, is a lot more than that. That you know, that yeah. you know, that they, they could be there's, they, you could be talking to someone on the train and the person is making a lot of sense, but you don't know what kind of mental anguish he's going through. Yeah. And, you know, and he might not even say anything. He might be smiling with you, but as soon as he steps off the train, you know, something does hit him and he's maybe he's depressed, he's sad, he's anxious about something. And you know those are the kind of things that we need. We are trying to bring to fore in Nigeria. That there's a, there's a lot of things that go on with people that we need to be aware, aware about. And um, so also try and remove the stigma stigmatization. Is that the right word? <laughs> you know, so people get stigmatized by when they hear mental health. They they think you know like like I said because they have that idea that it's, it's someone that is stuck crazy and running on the street. Mm-hmm. That you know that is not something that they wish on themselves, and they might be also be going through things that, and do that sometimes when, for people to even get to that state where stage where they are at that stage of their start crazy. I, I don't really like to use that word because yeah, yeah, it's not like if those people cannot be helped. A lot of those people that we see roaming mm. on the, roaming on the streets can be helped. Yeah, you know they can be helped and they can go back to living normal, normal fulfilling lives like everybody else. And so that's the kind of thing that we're trying to address. But we're like, you know, what all we are trying to do is like, okay, there are certain things that you might not see, like the guy that is on the street, but might be affecting everybody, and which is what the survey showed showed to us that, as at least in what we, what we saw is that almost seven out of ten Nigerians are at high risk of having mental health problems, which is a lot mm. when you think about oh. it. And when you understand how, if you understand how the environment is in Nigeria, is really kind of a harsh environment as yeah. compared to developed countries because you have people who are tend to who are on a survival mode mental state on, on a daily basis. Mm. There's no harm that's not going to affect you one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs>